10 years longer. Raise your hand. You'd rather not die 10 years too soon, okay? I, I don't want to die too soon, okay? All right, how many folks here, uh, turn on that one light there in the center, would you? Uh, let me ask you, how many folks here could use an extra $20,000? Right? By the way, I could use $20,000, okay? Uh, I read an interesting study done by, I think it was Time Magazine or somebody, it's kind of interesting, and they said this, they took like 5,000 people, and they studied these people who never went to church ever, they, they didn't go on Sunday, they didn't go once a year, and then they took these people who went to church every Sunday, and they, this 5,000 people, and you know what they found out, it's kind of interesting, they said, so we followed these people for like about 40 years, till they're about almost 70, and said, you know what we found? The people that went to church every Sunday as a group of 5,000, they, as a rule, now there are exceptions to the rule, but it says as a rule, they live 10 years longer. Hello? <laughs> Amen? You say, you want to live longer? I, I don't care whether you get saved or not. Just go to church. Amen? You'll live longer. Amen? And then they found this. These people here uh, that didn't go to church, not only did they die sooner, but they found these guys that lived longer, I mean, they went to church every Sunday, when they were 70 years old, they had a net worth of $20,000 more than the folks that never went to church. So if you want to live longer and you want to come out ahead financially, go to church! Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, we're going to study some people who decided to leave. Now, if you don't like this church or you don't like some church, find one that you do like. Amen. One that preaches the Bible, believes in getting saved, and doing something for God. Now, there, I, I picked up this article on these icebergs that broke off from the main flow, uh, and it's kind of interesting. They had one kind of iceberg, and we'll turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 2. And they have one kind of iceberg, Brother Helm, that's called a growler iceberg. A growler iceberg. And what it is that this iceberg has compressed air pockets all in it. And whenever it goes near anything, it makes these weird noises. Uh, I've met people like that, amen? amen. You've met some people are happy and some people are not. You know, happiness is a choice. Amen. You know that? You can decide. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, you can gripe about the glass being half full, or you can rejoice because it's, I mean, you can rejoice because it's half full, or you can gripe because it's half empty. It's the same glass. It's the same circumstance. What's the difference? Your attitude is there. Now, my kids are now grown. They're, they're 30 years old. We have four little grandbabies, four little girls, and we'll have for this Christmas. And uh, so that's wonderful. Well, we got together. Uh, last uh, this last summer, and I'm telling you what, I couldn't believe it. Uh, the sibling rivalry. Uh, I mean, you know what sibling rivalry is? That is adult kids acting like 10 years old and fussing and fuming and stuff. I just typed up a letter for them for Christmas. You know what? New family policy. Uh, I'm sending it to all of them with a copy of how to win friends and influence people by Bill Carnegie, how to be nice to people, and, and another thing I'm saying. But anyway, and I said, look, first policy. Uh, the first policy is be nice. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's pretty simple. The second policy is forget the things in the past. I don't, they were, what the hell? They were griping about, when you were in high school, you, did, you said this and you did, hey, Knock it off. Amen. <laughs> Grow up. Get over it. I couldn't believe it. Mean, they were, you know, I mean, there was an intense, heated discussions over a bunch of silly high school, college that didn't amount to a hill of beans. And I told Ryan, I don't want to hear anymore. If anybody ever does that again, I'm going to stop you right in the spot and say, knock it off and shut up. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to hear any of The Bible says, here's the point. The Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind and pressing on toward the mark. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things uh, are, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that, would there be any virtue? Would there be any virtue? Think on these things. Be positive. Is that what the Bible says? 
first thing, forget the things that are behind. Second of all, be positive. Amen. <laughs> I, I just sat there and I'm, uh, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm right now. I said, listen, I, I, I may live 10 more years. I may have five more years. I'm not refereeing anymore. <laughs> I don't want any more growlers. He says here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. I said, next time we get together for Christmas or Thanksgiving, I better not, if anybody says anything about something you didn't use in high school, and I'm talking about petty things. You, you said this to my girlfriend. And you, and you did, give me, I, 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 listen, I want everybody to turn to the people, somebody beside them, and look at them and say, get over it. Get over it, Josh. Just tell them get over it. Amen? Get over it. Amen? The Bible says, forget the things that are behind, be positive, and go on and do something for God. You cannot let... Um, you know, let me tell you something. I could, I've had so many things happen. Listen, when I was eight years old, my parents got a divorce. Okay? I was eight years old. They put my sister, because she was a young lady at 12 years old, they put her in the orphanage while they're fighting out this divorce thing for a year. They put my eight, my five-year-old brother, because he was a little tiny kid, they put him in the orphanage, but they didn't have any room for me. So when I was eight years old, uh, they said, well, I can't put him in the orphanage, so the only place we knew, can't go with mom, can't go with dad, so the only thing we'll have to do, we'll put him in a juvenile detention center. I went to jail when I was eight years old, and I was there for a year. Now, I could sit around and boy, that wasn't right. That was unfair. That was, you know. Hey, get over it. Amen. Be positive. Do something that will count for God. And I says here in Philippians, I want you to turn there. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Very quickly. <coughs> in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, it says exactly that. It says, you can set, I can gripe about politics. I can gripe. Uh, let me tell you something. I'd like to take anybody that has... That's down. I, I, anybody here down tonight? You're, you're depressed. You're dragging. You know. Thank God the price, the gas, the prices come down. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Man, that's four dollars a gallon of stuff. Uh, I just came from Africa. Uh, folks, everybody in this building right now tonight, everybody here is a millionaire. Do you know those folks in Africa, even if you had a million dollars in Ghana, West Africa, you can't go to Walmart. You know that? If you have a million dollars in Ghana, West Africa, you can't go down here to the Chinese buffet or the Mexican restaurant. Uh, you can't do anything. Uh, yeah, the roads are terrible. The gasoline is terrible. The whole thing. Then you have to worry about getting AIDS, Ebola, and leprosy. No shots, no medicine, and malaria. Everybody here, you all are living in a paradise, and you're all millionaires, and you didn't even know it. He says here in Philippians chapter 4, he says here in Philippians chapter 4, I mean, excuse me, chapter 2, he says in verse 14, he says, stop this, don't be a growler, don't be grousing around, there's always something to gripe about. Uh, I could, if you want things to gripe about, I can give you a list of things to gripe about. Hey, gripe about the positive, gripe about the taxes, gripe about this, or you can rejoice. The Bible says... Paul, when he was in jail, he said, when he was in jail, laying on the floor with the rats and the roaches, he said, rejoice! Because you know what? No matter what's going on in your life, if you're saved, you're going to heaven. Amen. 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 And uh, thank God. He says right here in Philippians chapter 2, and verse, uh, verse 14, he says this, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Don't be a growler. Another one. The, the, another type of an iceberg is a blocked iceberg. And these, these icebergs were giant things, and they would just block things. The devil would hinder is like a blocked iceberg. The, the, Paul said, I would come to you, but the, Satan hindered me. And then Paul said, there were certain uh, religious people. They're like these blocked icebergs. They hinder. Listen, don't be a hindrance. Amen? Lead Follow or get out of the way. Amen. <laughs> I, I have a sign I put in our church in Puerto Rico. It said, why did you come to church? Did you come to be a blessing? Did you come to get a blessing? If you did not come to get a blessing, if you did not come to be a blessing, please go home. Amen. <laughs> if you come to fuss and fight, carry on, give me a break, man. 
I just, I just, I just don't have time. I, you know, my wife and I, we get along great. We, we never fuss and fight. We don't have time. We don't have time to fuss and fight. All right, now don't be a growler and do not cut that light back there, will you, son, real quickly? Don't be a growler and don't be a blocker and don't be a pinnacle iceberg lifted up. The devil's like that. Don't be a dome iceberg. That's like the religious crowd. And you say, why? Because 